Today on this, as the church year draws to a close, it is the third to the last Sunday of our church year. Today our focus is on saints triumphant and that portion of the church year in which we focus on the fact that as children of God we will live with Him in glory one day. Our service today will follow the service that begins on page 154 in the front of the blue hymnal. Everything for today's service will be taken from the blue hymnal. Uh, but before we begin today we'll watch the November edition of the Wells Connection. Following that the bells will be rung and then we'll join to sing our opening hymn. I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. Certainly staying close to our Savior through His Gospel and Word and Sacraments is vital for all of us. But there are certain groups of people for whom that's harder to do in a traditional way. For those groups, Wells has various special ministries to keep them connected to Jesus, including to our brothers and sisters in the military. In a family where dad's deployment bags have been packed and ready to go for months, just in case, things can sometimes be uncertain and uneasy. Deployments are now much more contingency focused as we take a look at what's going on in the news with various countries around the world. Because for this Wells family just outside of Savannah, Georgia, dad could be sent overseas for months or even a year at a moment's notice, forcing him to miss birthdays, holidays. He's even had to miss the birth of one of his children. There's been a lot of conversations with the kids because it changes daily, you know. Um, so just kind of being ready for anything. Michael Hefty has served in the United States Army for the last 16 years. Over that span of time, he's been deployed four times and assigned to 10 different duty stations. Most of those moves happening with his wife and children. There was a period where we moved four years in a row. Each duty station was just a year, and that, that was a little much. At the moment, the Hefty family is blessed with a Wells Church just half an hour away from home, providing regular opportunities to worship the Lord and study His Word with fellow believers, as well as strong Christian support during this time of uncertainty. But that hasn't always been the case. We have found personally that there is a big difference between live streaming and being able to meet in person and strengthen each other in the faith uh, through that fellowship and through being able to take communion together in person. So, thankfully for the Heftees and hundreds of other Wells families in the military stationed at home and abroad, Wells Ministry to the Military offers opportunities for Christian support. Our job, our responsibility to our military uh, families is to just be there, to, just to be present, to listen, to reach out and not just assume that everything's okay, uh, especially when someone in the family deploys, that our congregations just rally around those people. And, and support them. Wells Ministry to the Military works to provide service members and their families with resources in support of their spiritual welfare. In addition to print materials such as military-themed devotions and prayer booklets, the ministry also provides personal connections, whether that's to a Wells civilian chaplain or to a military contact pastor. And these are pastors that serve in, in congregations that are located near military installations. Without having that understanding myself from personal experience to know what it's like to be in the military and, and what are the best ways that we can serve them, um, 
I think that's just helpful to have those resources and, you know, I don't have to figure it out myself. If a Wells member serving in the military reaches out to their local military contact pastor, there's a chance that the pastor might be able to come on base. There is one recruit in, in particular that followed the protocol exactly. And uh, so because of him, he's the one that, that got me on base uh, for, for the, the Lord's Supper. And through that one connection, me being on base that one time, has now opened up the door for me to lead a Lutheran service on base every Sunday. The isolation and other struggles that these families face can make something like a deployment even harder than it already is. And that's where the support of Wells Ministry to the military can be so important. Our pastor took Mike to drop him off because he knew I couldn't do it. Um, things like that, you know, just step, sorry, stepping in to some of those situations. It's really comforting to know that other Christians are supporting the family back home all deployed. It's important when the congregation just steps up and says, how's it going? You know, because sometimes you just need somebody to talk to that can share in your burdens. Without our faith, I, I don't know how our family would continue or our relationship, Katie and I's, would continue to stay strong. Uh, and even the conversation with the kids, they sometimes have been um, anxious, uh, very nervous or scared what might happen to dad on a certain deployment or what we might be training for. Uh, and, and I always remind them, like, the Lord's in control. We have comfort in that and it doesn't matter and, and God will watch over them afterwards regardless of what decision he makes. Our ministry to the military works hard to develop robust congregational ministry to military members and their families. Our goal is to provide people who protect our nation with the support of church family and called workers who are sensitive to the stresses of military life. You can join this ministry by registering congregational service members at wells.net forward slash refer.
please rise. I invite you to turn to page 154 in the front of the blue hymnal, the service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God and Savior, you have set the final day and hour when we shall be delivered from this world of sin and death. Keep us ever watchful for the coming of your Son, that we may sit with him and all your holy ones at the marriage feast in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. First lesson is taken from the Revelation to St. John, the 21st chapter, beginning with verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, because the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea no longer existed. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And from the throne I heard a loud voice that said, Look, God's dwelling is with people. He will dwell with them. They will be his people. God himself will be with them, and he will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain, because the former things have passed away. The one who was seated on the throne said to me, Look, I am making everything new. He also said, Write, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this morning psalm number is Psalm number 148. We'll sing the verses and refrain to Psalm 148 after the organist has played through both of them. second lesson is taken from the letter to the Hebrews in chapter 11. What more should I say? There would not be enough time for me to continue to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. By faith they conquered kingdoms, carried out justice, obtained things that were promised, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, 
escaped the edges of the sword, were made powerful after being weak, became mighty in battle, and caused foreign armies to flee. Women received back their dead by resurrection, and others who were tortured did not accept their release so that they may take part in a better resurrection. Still others experienced mocking and lashes, in addition to chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they were tempted, they were killed with a sword, they went around in sheepskins and goatskins, needy, afflicted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them as they wandered in deserts and mountains and caves and holes in the ground. All of these were commended in Scripture by faith, yet they did not receive what was promised, because God had planned something better for us, namely, that they would not reach the goal apart from us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel and the gospel acclamation. We'll continue with the gospel acclamation and the alleluias. are my joy and my heart's delight. The Holy Gospel is taken from St. Luke in chapter 6. He lifted up his eyes to his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, because yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, because you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, because you will laugh. Blessed are you whenever people hate you, and whenever they exclude and insult you, and reject your name as evil, because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, because of this. Your reward is great in heaven. The fact is, their fathers constantly did the same things to the prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn number 880.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. For meditation today, we turn our attention again to the first lesson, various verses of Revelation chapter 21. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And from the throne I heard a loud voice that said, Look, God's dwelling is with people. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them, and he will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain, because the former things have passed away. He also said, Write, for these th words are trustworthy and true. And has said to me, I am done, or it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The Word of God. Dear friends in Jesus Christ, our Lord, now that the calendar has turned to November, we're beginning to see more and more indications that Christmas isn't far away, and one of those signs is that, uh, at least on certain television channels, you can begin to watch Christmas movies. Some of them are new, others have been around quite a while. One of the so-called classic Christmas movies stars Jimmy Stewart as a young man who is forced to change his entire life's plan. Growing up in upstate New York, George Bailey, Stewart's character, had big plans to travel the world. And then, when he was in his early 20s, suddenly his father unexpectedly died, and George was forced to take over the family business, a building and loan company. Well, he ended up getting married. They went through the Great Depression. World War II came along, then the baby boom. And throughout all of this, Stuart was able to keep the family business afloat, raise a family, enjoy a certain amount of life's pleasures. But then a fateful thing happened when his uncle, who was elderly and a, a little bit uh, absent-minded at times, no coincidence, uh, happened to misplace an entire deposit. And so it looked as if the building and loan was going to default. And Bailey began to realize that probably he thought it would have been better if he'd have just never been born. And so he had a chance to see that, to see what life in this world would be like if he himself had never been born. He came to realize how that wouldn't have been so good because his little brother, who had become a war hero by saving the lives of many men on a ship, never saved them because George wasn't around to save him when they were children. And the young man fell into a frozen pond and nearly drowned. His beautiful wife never did marry because George wasn't there to marry, and so she became a, a single woman and stayed single her entire life and was absolutely unhappy about it. His absent-minded uncle had turned to being an alcoholic instead of having the support of his nephew. And so Stewart's character, George Bailey, got an opportunity to see that even though his life had challenges and troubles and there was a financial hardship right around the corner, there was some truth to the movie's title. It's a Wonderful Life. Dear friends, you and I are saints of God. We're not saints because some religious organization decided to make us that. You're not saints because you yourself have done enough to earn that title. You are a saint because God himself has made you one. You are a child of his, and from the moment you became a Christian, you were a saint, a holy one of God. And yet, we would all admit, some of us perhaps more than others, that being a saint in this world doesn't always mean things go smoothly. We face challenges and we face troubles. We face Satan regularly. There is temptation, there is sin. We battle uh, all kinds of problems. And then there's the setbacks that are common to man, illness, heartache, and so forth. And yet, based upon what our Lord revealed to John in the Revelation, I don't think we can come to any other conclusion than that it's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful life with everything that is good prepared for us by God himself. Now, yes, nowadays life might not seem so wonderful. Life might seem more down than up. 
because we do face challenges and we live in a world that is filled with trouble and hardship. But look at what's coming. This is the last vision that John received in the book of Revelation. The ones prior to it were horrible. They talked about Satan coming out back into this world and trying his level best to destroy every one of us. They talked about the destruction of the world itself as we know it. They talked about many horrible things. This one, this one is different. This one shows us nothing but wonderful things. And so it's a wonderful life when we consider where we're going to live in heavenly glory. The new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. That wonderful home that you and I are going to have one day with our Lord. Now you may have a wonderful home right now. You may have fashioned your house just the way you want it with the right paint color, the right room layout. Maybe you've built a new place and it's just to your specifications. Or you bought another person's property and you've made it your own. Nothing wrong with either one. You've no doubt poured a lot of time and energy and perhaps money into it. But I submit to you that it is not anywhere near in comparison to what you and I will have when we're in heaven. Because the home you have now, as nice as it is, is still going to have roofs that leak, pipes that break, plumbing that backs up, walls that need to be fixed, floors that might need to be replaced, appliances that will wear out, and a whole host of other things. What you and I have waiting for us is a home from God himself, perfect in every way, that will never wear out. And another thing that makes life for the saint wonderful is the fact that we will dwell with God in a way that you and I do not do right now. When God created the world, he and Adam and Eve were in perfect harmony. They were both created in the image of God. They didn't look like God. God doesn't have a body, of course. They couldn't look like him, but they, they were perfect. They were holy. They were sinless. And their minds were perfectly in tune with God's. And God's will and their will were in sync with one another. But then came sin. And after sin, there was no such relationship between humanity and God at all. Humanity had decided they would rather live apart from God and do it their way. And so God, to a degree, let them. But God also reminded them that he was not finished with humanity. And so he promised salvation. And then, for a brief time in world history, God himself entered world history and human history when his son took on flesh. But that's as close as it ever got. But the life to come, we'll be going to dwell with God, again, much like Adam and Eve, we're not going to have to wonder, what does God think? Why did God do this? Why would God allow this? None of those questions will enter our mind because we'll be living in perfect harmony with God once again. His dwelling will be with us and we with him. And of this, dear friends, you and I can be sure. George Bailey had big dreams. He was going to travel the world he rarely left, in fact, in the movie, he never left his little town in upstate New York. We make plans. We have plans for our lives. We have plans for our homes. We have plans for our families. And sometimes they materialize, but often they do not. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to someone and they said, we weren't planning on this when their loved one is in a hospital bed, when they're making plans for a funeral, when they're planning to call whomever they can to repair whatever needs to be fixed, we can plan all we want, but that does not mean that our plans will work out. But when God says to you and to me and to all of his saints that the day is coming when he is going to be dwelling with us, it's as certain as if it had already happened. Because as he said, these words are trustworthy and true. It is done. You and I can be confident of that. We can try to be confident in our plans. We can make them. 
but they don't always work out according to plan. But God's do. And his plan is not for you and for me to suffer. His plan is for all of his people to enjoy paradise with him forever. A tall order, is it not? A tall order, is it not, when we consider what that means? It means we're going to have to get rid of everything that would ever hinder that from happening. And there's really only one thing that's ever going to stand in our way between us living with our Heavenly Father in paradise forever. And that is our sinfulness. Well, we can work at it. We can claim we're going to be better. And many people try. People do this all the time. They make resolutions, sometimes on New Year's, sometimes at other times of the year. They resolve to be a better husband, a better wife, a better spouse, a better parent, a better child, a better whatever. And maybe they give up some bad habit, or two, or three, or four, or five. But they can't make themselves perfect. And that's the only kind of person God will accept. A perfect person. So what you and I cannot do, what no saint could ever do for himself or herself, God has done for us. His dwelling comes down like the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. The bride did not make herself ready. The bride was prepared. She was made ready by someone else. God has made you and me ready for him. God has made us ready for perfection and for paradise by taking away our sins. So rather than resolve to be a better person, though you may want to, God has resolved to make us perfect people through his son, Jesus Christ. And what you and I may or may not be successful at because if you're like me, you've made more than one resolution in your life. They don't always materialize. What we cannot always do, and certainly cannot do perfectly, God has done 100% perfectly. By removing our sins through his son, Jesus Christ. And so, dear friends, it is a wonderful life that we live. Oh yeah, there's going to be hardship and trouble. In the movie, George Bailey comes to realize, you know, I don't have it so bad. And he wanted to live again. He wanted to, not to have to see the life that would be if he weren't in existence. He wanted to be there for his wife and his children, for his uncle, for everyone that he knew. Because he realized, yes, there were hardships, but it's still a wonderful life. It would be nice if I could tell you that as a child of God, you'll never get sick, your car will always start, your home will always be wonderful, your family will adore you, even if they should, and everything will go well. But I'd be lying if I told you that. And you know better. There will be times when those closest to you will hurt you the most. There will be times when the people whom you think should give you nothing but love seem to send you nothing but frustration. There will be times when it seems even the Lord himself has stepped back from your life perhaps and, and hidden himself from you as trials and troubles and tribulations one after another pile up. But your God is not far from you and he will never leave you. The devil wants you to think so. The devil will send every trouble your way to get you to believe that life is miserable and life with God is even worse. But don't believe him. Because for a saint such as yourself and all the saints, it's a wonderful life. Here we battle trials and troubles. Here we are tempted. Here we fall into sin. Here we confess our sins as we did earlier today. And we'll do it again next week and the week after that, Lord willing, if we're still here. But this isn't our entire life. This is just a very small portion of our existence. As saints of God, we will triumph over all of these hardships and difficulties because our Savior has triumphed for us. And he wants us to join him in heaven and he has done exactly what we need so that it will happen. He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. It is done. And so, my dear fellow saints, as we go through life today and tomorrow, 
and face whatever challenges come our way. We don't do it alone. We do so knowing that we will triumph because Christ has triumphed. And because he has won the victory, the victory is ours as well. And so we don't just celebrate saints triumphant and think of Peter and Paul and John and all those people mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11 of which we didn't read, but you can on your own, all the verses prior to verse 32. We don't celebrate saints triumphant just for them. We celebrate saints triumphant because that is what we are. We are saints of God and we are triumphant because of him. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in confessing our Christian faith with the Apostles' Creed on page 163. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers. With thanksgiving and praise, O Lord, we remember all your faithful servants who throughout the ages have witnessed to your name, the mighty and the lowly, great leaders and humble men and women, those who have served you in prosperity and those who in the day of trouble have not failed, those in foreign places and those in this land. We remember especially our members from Mount Calvary called home to your side in the last year. We rejoice that they now rest from their labors in your presence. Heavenly Father, we recall with thanksgiving what you have done for your church through them. May their good works prompted by your love in Christ and performed to your glory while here on earth encourage us to live for you. As we join our worship and our work with those who have gone before us, may we acknowledge ourselves to be part of that great cloud of witnesses from every age and place. Unite all your people in the true faith, in the hope of an eternity at your side, and in the love that reveals us to be your children. We offer special prayer this morning on behalf of Dave and Chris Schneider, who are celebrating their 35th wedding anniversary. We also remember in our prayers uh, Gavin Labuse, who is uh, one of our students at our school. He is currently hospitalized with uh, abscesses in his appendix. And as an election is coming up, in case you had not heard, we offer prayer for our nation. We pray. Triune God, as Dave and Chris Schneider celebrate their 35th wedding anniversary, Accept our heartfelt thanks for all of the blessings that they have received. As companions on the journey through life, they have loved, consoled, and supported one another. But most important, they have grown closer to you. By your grace, they have maintained a Christian home. They have learned forgiveness and unconditional love from you. Your word has been a lamp to their feet and a light for their path. Keep them committed to each other and to you. Continue to supply their earthly needs according to your will. Give them joy in the years to come through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And Lord Jesus, in your word, you assure us that our children are dear to you. Have mercy on this sick child, Gavin Labus, for whom we offer our prayers. Spare his life that you have given and grant healing and recovery according to your will. Comfort him with the <coughs> this child uh, whom you have purchased with your blood. Be with his mother also at this time to assure her that you are always with her loved one. You have promised never to forsake your own, and therefore we commend this child into your loving hands, knowing that there he is safe today, tomorrow, and always. And Lord God, Lord of the nations, you have made us citizens both of your kingdom of grace and of the earthly nation in which we live. You have placed us under a government that gives us the privilege of choosing the leaders who govern us. 
as in other election approaches, help us to appreciate and use this privilege. Bless our nation through the election of honest and responsible officials, and watch over us each day with your almighty protection and your unfailing love. And hear us, Lord, as we now bring to you our private petitions. Spirit, our comfort in trouble, and our guide through life. As you have protected and prospered your saints in the past, look with favor upon us now, and bring us safely into eternal glory. Amen. At this time the offering will be brought forward. Father, trusting in your continued blessings of faith, of health, and of employment, we bring our offering to you. Grant us your spirit that whatever we receive, we shall regard as your blessing and be moved to give to you your share. May we never forget that as your redeemed children, we are also your stewards. May we resolve never to fail you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our service continues with the next hymn, hymn number 881. Please rise for prayer. 
Our service concludes on page 171 in the front of the hymnal, page 171. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that, being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. May be seated for the closing hymn, hymn 884. Thank you for spending some of your time with us this Sunday morning. If you're a visitor with us or worshiping with us online, we especially appreciate your time with us today. Thanks to our ushers and our greeters, to our organist and to our videographer. Thank you also to Dave and Chris Schneider for the flowers that are adorning the Lord's altar this morning. As you leave today, you're welcome to grab the November issue of the Ford in Christ magazine on the little table in the back of church. Also, somewhere back there, I believe, are some order forms for poinsettias, um, the information in the parish notes about that. So you're welcome to fill out an order form and, and uh, we'll have more beautiful flowers up here then uh, for the Christmas season. Also on the podium is a sign-up sheet for the Ladies' Aid Christmas party. It's coming up in the early part of December, so uh, you're welcome to begin signing up for that. It'll be out there for the next couple of weeks. Uh, also, the live nativity sets up at Riverside Park on typically on Saturdays in November, but as you know, yesterday's weather did not allow that, so they're going to be doing it today from about 12.30 this afternoon until around four, 5 o'clock or so. So if you could help out for any of that or all of it, you're certainly welcome just to go down to the park to help them out. Uh, you're certainly invited down to the cafeteria for some fellowship and for some refreshments. Um, you may want to know what heaven is like. We don't know exactly. 
but if you go to the cafeteria, there are donuts. So that's probably going to give you a slight indication of what you can expect once you get up there. Uh, following the refreshments and fellowship, there will be Sunday school and Bible class at their usual times. Again, we thank you. May the Lord bless your week.